Hey everyone, today I have a brand new, totally free AI video generator. It's pretty impressive and I've got some interesting information on who's behind it. And yes, I should say totally free for now. You guys have been around the block long enough, you know how this works. Plus, we're going to take a look at the latest research on generating full-length AI films. Yep, it's coming. All that plus drama at Midjourney. Yeah, they've got bad blood with stability.ai. This one is pretty wild. It's actually rumored to be the plot line for the second season of Netflix's Beef. Okay, lots to cover. Let's dive in. First up is Hyper.ai, a new video generation platform that you can start using right now totally for free. This one is brought to us by Yi Xiao Miao and Zhu Wang, two former Google DeepMind alums who have teamed up uh, to form this platform, raising over $19 million. So it does look like Hyper is set to be quite a contender in the AI video race. Hyper offers text to video, a uh, very nice, clean, smooth movement here. We're going to take a deeper look at that, but clearly, I mean, obviously it does these animated styles very well. It also does image to video. In this example, uh, they actually showcase that you can generate images on the platform and then animate that. I have not seen that on the platform yet, but uh, we are going to take a look at some image to video examples. And also somewhat surprisingly, they offer video repainting or, you know, video in painting, essentially. They actually had this kind of neat a demo of repainting on the site with you know somebody pouring the smoothie mixture into a bowl and then repainting it to be like this watercolored uh you know koi fish thing uh yeah very creative like it a lot getting started the interface is pretty straightforward there is a light dark mode down here by the way uh change it to dark because once again only psychopaths use light mode your prompt box is down below and you have a number of different options in terms of how you want to generate your video uh, either in a full hd version animate your image, which is basically image referencing, repainting your video, and then two more options for creating with text prompts or image referencing, but this time in standard definition. There is a reason why we'll get to that in one second. Finally, at the end of the options is extend your video. Uh, this obviously has not been enabled yet, but will be coming soon. Diving in, in my last video, I did kind of a quick sketch music video of some creepy dolls working in a factory. For that, I ended up utilizing Pika. So I decided to take the same prompt and run it through Hyper just to see what the results would look like. So pretty much the exact same prompt, which is stop motion, faceless dolls working in a factory, gothic dark, uh, yielded these results, which looks really good. So to note, generations in this HD format tend to be around two seconds. I know, it's super short. I do have a bit of a workaround for that. We'll get to that in just one minute. Once you're in the generation and creation area, if you wanna swap out modes, you can simply come up to this creation mode up here, and then you, know, you have all of your various templates once again. So taking that same prompt in the standard definition model, you'll note that we now have additional templates uh, up here that we can add in. Basically what this is doing is, it's it's just going to add keywords into your prompt. So uh, say we're going with this in steampunk, uh, by hitting that we now have weighted steampunk style uh, mechanisms, fantasy, gear, decoration, etc. We also have additional options here. Uh, for example, you can lock the seed number. Uh, there is controls for motion levels. Let's just crank that all the way up. And then the duration. On the standard definition version, you can take your generations up to four seconds. Running that, but removing the steampunk prompt uh, yields this, which, yeah, that looks pretty good. I would put it pretty much on par with the Pika outputs that I got in the last video. So these are definitely two different models. Image to video also looks really good. I took this Dune inspired, it, like heavily Dune inspired image that I generated up in mid journey, mostly because I have Dune fever. I have not seen it yet, hopefully next week. Anyhow, running that into Hyper and then adding the prompt man looks to camera intense gaze and running that in the HD mode yielded this, which yes, while short does look very good. Now taking that same image and running it through the SD model with the exact same prompt yielded this. The results from the SD version are just a little bit more on the, I don't know, kind of static and bland side. Uh, additionally, Timothy Chalamet's stunt double here has kind of an animated look to it. His eyes are kind of doing the Pennywise thing as well. Uh, and just, you know, overall the HD version is definitely far superior to this. That said, I do think that you can still get some really cool results out of the SD model. Uh, for example, this is a prompt of just uh, a wizard standing in an enchanted forest and I use the Ghibli preset. And yeah, this looks really, really nice. Hopping over to the community feed to see the breadth of what Hyper is capable of. Uh, I ran across this output, which looks 
really, really good. Um, yeah, I mean, I would hesitantly call this somewhere in the neighborhood of Sora quality, although, you know, granted, much shorter. Something that I notice is that the cars are all maintaining consistency, like they're they're not morphing all over the place and there aren't a few of them like driving backwards. Although I do have a bone to pick that there are what, like five outward bound lanes and one inward bound lane. If there's one thing SimCity taught me is that this is gonna end in disaster. Sticking with the imaginative side, this ghost train in the sky looks really, really good. This interior zoom out also looks really good. Although obviously, you know, limited in time, it's it's also not like morphing out too much. Everything is staying consistent and stable. This extreme close up also caught my eye. Yeah, I mean, pun not intended. Uh, but yeah, this is actually text to video. It's not image to video. So that's what I'm saying about it approaching Sora level quality, although just, you know, not as long. A few more quick ones. Yeah, walk cycle here looks really, really good. Uh, all six legs look like they are actually present and not just like sort of floating along a surface. Another walk cycle, or I should say step cycle, uh, in sort of an animated style. This looks really solid. And finally, cribbing one of the famous Sora text prompts, uh, flyover of a California gold rush town, uh, we end up with this, which, uh, yeah, I mean, it, this looks really, really good. Now, I should say it's still AI video, and there is still weirdness abound. Uh, taking our old friend, the man in the blue business suit, walking down a busy city street gets us this. Uh, where our guy is like moonwalking down the center lane of a city street. Definitely not safe. Uh, additionally, we have this car over here that's actually driving backwards, but you know, maybe they just made a wrong turn down a one-way street. But again, at the cost of free, I mean, re-roll to your heart's content until you find something that you like. Overall, I think the results out of Hyper are super impressive. Yeah, there is that two second limitation on the HD versions, uh, but that is a bridge that will be crossed at one point or another. In the meantime, uh, if you want a quick hack in terms of extending your shots, you can always bring your clip into a nonlinear editor like Premiere that we have here or DaVinci Resolve and extend it out. In Premiere, what you'll wanna do is uh, just right click on it, come to speed duration, uh, take the speed down to 50%, and then just make sure that optical flow is turned on here. DaVinci also has something pretty similar, uh, but yeah, as you can see, the results are pretty good. A little slowed down, but I mean, not bad. Ultimately, to get the best results, you should probably use something like Topaz Video AI. And listen, I know it is super expensive, but it is also kind of the best in class for this particular job. And that pretty much is the smoothest and best result that you can possibly get. And again, I know the two second thing is a bit of a bummer, but again, that is just temporary. And even now, I think you can craft together a pretty solid narrative by using a combination of two second HD shots, extending them out a bit, and four second SD shots uh, to vary out your shot lengths. Anyhow, moving on from like two second shots to feature length movies, uh, we have Movie LLM, enhancing long video understanding with AI generated movies. Now this one is in the paper research arena, but it does set the stage for what will be eventually coming, which is you know fully generated AI movies from a prompt. We actually have seen something kind of similar to this in a previous video, namely LTX Studio. Uh, if you missed that video, it is linked down below. Movie LLM leverages the power of GPT-4 and text to image models to generate detailed scripts and corresponding visuals. The work path of Movie LLM is the movie plot generation, a style immobilization process and video instruction by data generation. Movie LLM leans on GPT-4 for sort of the initial breakdown of the film um, with GPT coming up with the theme, the overview, movie style, frame level description, and the characters of the film. From there, GPT-4 takes that output and generates up epoch chapters, essentially scenes for the most part, uh, at which point it takes it through another process where it will generate out you know, chapters for each scene detailing both the characters, the actions that are happening, and the location. Uh, from there, it actually takes that output and then begins generating dialogue for each of those scenes. The real key to all of this is in the style immobilization process in which uh, essentially keywords are then extracted from each of those chapter epochs, the characters and the plot summary, uh, run through stable diffusion to generate up the various you know, scenes, characters and locations, uh, but then taken through the uh, textural inversion process and the immobilized style embedding in order to essentially lock the look of the entire film into 
one consistent or one, multiple consistent characters and multiple consistent locations. From there, it's taken back out through generation guiding and through another stable diffusion process to generate out keyframes for each one of the scenes. Now, the paper did not provide any video examples, but we can see keyframe comparisons, uh, namely uh, the movie LLM output is down here where uh, you know, it does. It looks like it's very consistent in terms of style and in character. Whereas in the other two examples, uh, this custom diffusion one in particular is a little bit all over the place in terms of its overall style and look. Just zooming in here for a minute because the custom diffusion model actually did make me laugh a little bit. Like in the second example where he's supposed to be a blacksmith, he just kind of looks like a drummer for like an 80s rock band. Interestingly, in the paper, they do note that there isn't a lot of resources out there in terms of training models for extremely long, like feature length movies. Uh, but they ended up using the data from the movie net data set, which apparently is a massive data set of over 1000 movies and 60,000 trailers. Now to note the movies and trailers aren't actually within this data set. It's just the data from those films and trailers. By utilizing the MovieNet data set, Movie LLM is able to basically come up with better synopses for its own films. Uh, weirdly flexed with an example by using the film Splice. I've seen Splice and that's a pretty odd choice to go with for an example. If you haven't seen it, I pretty much say, you know, you can take a pass on that one. Uh, what you should check out is Natalie's other movie, Cube. That movie is really good. Rounding out with some pretty odd mid-journey news. Uh, yesterday's office hours started off on a pretty weird note. Mid-journey CEO David Holtz explained that the 24-hour outage they had on Saturday was caused by bot-like behavior from paid accounts. He then said that this originated from stability.ai employees basically scraping for images and text prompts, at which point he announced that he was effectively banning all stability.ai employees from using the Midjourney service. Nick St. Pierre took to Twitter as this was happening and offered stability.ai's Imad Mustak the opportunity to comment. Imad's response was, uh, what? Imad shortly followed up with, and I'm just quoting directly here, it's Twitter, there are grammatical and spelling errors galore, but you know, it, again, it's Twitter. Uh, very confusing how two accounts would do this team also hasn't been scraping as we have been using synthetic and other data given SD3 outperforms all other models. Anyway, I am a big Midjourney and David fan, which is why I back them at the start with the grant to pay for the beta. On E we go. Imad followed up from there with, if anyone did do this on team, have asked, we'll dig. Also happy if Midjourney reaches out direct. It's not great, but obviously not a DDoS attack, but unintentional. Certainly not instructed by us slash stability, though really happy with our data set and the augmentation we have on that. A little while later, David did respond to Imad saying, sent you some information to help with your internal investigation. Definitely interesting. I do hope the boys can resolve this issue. I mean, we have enough going on with Elon and Sam. We do not need any more drama. Meanwhile, Midjourney is still training their video model. It is reported to be quite good and Stability will be releasing Stable Diffusion 3 into the wild uh, pretty much at any moment. So that wraps up another crazy week in creative AI. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.